Hello, everybody. My name is Zach, and uh, I'm going to convince you that React is eating the world. So to do this, we have to explore the weird frontiers of React, places where React has no business being, but where we can find the logic of React. Uh, many of you have heard of React Native, which allows us to use React for designing mobile apps. But when React Native came out in 2015, it signaled a much larger trend in user interface development. React Native decoupled React from React DOM. Now, up until that point, React had relied on React DOM because React was seen and used as a browser technology for making user interfaces in the browser. And I call this the great decoupling, right? It was like an amicable breakup between React and the DOM, and suddenly React could go forth and venture beyond the DOM. And this actually ends up having huge implications for what things can be built with React. Uh, one of the first uh, React adventurers was Netflix. Uh, you probably know that Netflix runs on TVs, but most TVs are hundreds of times slower than a developer's laptop, so performance really counts for how Netflix runs on the television. Uh, back in the day, Netflix had a closed source rendering framework called Gibbon, and the great decoupling allowed Netflix to replace Gibbon and improve on Gibbon uh, with React. So this means that the next time that you're using Netflix on a television, you're actually seeing a React interface, similar to the UIs that we all know how to build. Right? It's, it's a little bit different, but it, the logic of React is still there. And in fact, just last week while I was preparing this talk, Airbnb released React Sketch. Now, I know basically nothing about React Sketch because it's so new, but this is another interesting example where React has been pushed to a new frontier, in this case, Sketch, which is a visual prototyping uh, application. So all of this is interesting, and it shows just how important the great decoupling was. But um, we can really see it, I think, if we look at some, some other, even stranger examples. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a mild-mannered, simple React component here that we would see in an application we'd build in the browser, and we're going to go and we're going to explore a couple different places where we can find similar things. Uh, the first is here in the console. So let me clear out the console. So here is Hello Full Stack running in the console. And to be clear, this is actually, this is a React interface. I'm in iTerm, right? And it's running and it's animated. And here it is actually as a dashboard. And what you'll notice that uh, wh what's happening here is I can actually sort of drag and drop this thing here in the console. And th there's no witchcraft happening here. It's just an iTerm. But here we have a React interface that's just being rendered in a thing that we would normally think of as just this very basic you know, environment for command line stuff. Um, so this is strange, and this is even stranger, because here is a comic that is made using React. And uh, again, I can you know, drag and drop and style the comic, and uh, they're talking about our, our subject matter here. I can download the final product, uh, you know, make changes to it, uh, all of that. Um, and things can get even weirder because here is a game actually made in React where I think there's actually music here. I can go around. It has sort of physics. I can do this like little Michael Jackson dance thing. And again, this is all we're still in React, right? So things are getting weirder and weirder. Um, so let's actually let me get out of this so we don't have to listen to the music anymore. Um, let's go over to uh, React Music. Because here we are, listening to music. Again, a, uh, this is generating beats based on strings that you put into to, uh, reference different notes and times. Again, uh, using React. Not React just for making things on the screen, but React for actually creating the beats that, that you're hearing. All right. And last but certainly not least, and I think probably the weirdest example of all, uh, it, it, it sort of things get really crazy because React has actually made the jump from software to hardware. You can control Arduinos, uh, you know, robots with React. And uh, here's a really interesting example of that. It's uh, what the creator calls a React-based defense system uh, called the CrossBro. So um, 
you know, we've seen this kind of weird, the, the weird way in which React can move between these domains, but I don't want the demos to distract from the core point here. And the core point here is really that uh, this is totally crazy. This is madness. Right? React is leaping beyond the DOM, and not just beyond the DOM, but into all sorts of places where it doesn't seem to belong. And the best way to see why this is the way that it is, is to look at some code. Okay, so here we are in the browser, right? This is our, you know, vanilla, mild-mannered uh, web browser component here. And now, uh, as we go, here we are in the console. And you'll notice, okay, there's our constructor. There's a place to hold our local state. Here's our renderer function. Okay, we're returning a bunch of nicely composed, you know, kind of JSX elements here. Okay, now I'm going to hop over to a comic. Here we are. Okay, more JSX elements. Don't, don't dwell on the, the details of the variables here, right? We're just looking at components with some props passed down to them. We're still in a comic. We're going to go here. Now we're in a game. Again, here we are with... Uh, um, doing some, some physics components here, and there's something for uh, some, some uh, methods on the object, our constructor, our local state. Here we are in component did mount, a method we all know, some local state again, and we end up down here, right? Again, returning a bunch of JSX components with props passed down to them, right? And now we're going to end up in music, and what do we see? We see, okay, there's a constructor, there's some local state, there's yeah, you, you get the point, right? Here we are down, uh, returning a bunch of JSX components with props passed down, right? And no matter how far we go, no matter how strange and different the use case is, right, all the way down to a robot, well, we always end up here at these kinds of blocks, right? We're in VR, native, console, comic, game, music, robot, whatever. No matter how far we stray from our original home in the browser's DOM, we're still very much in React. And the structure feels the same, right? You don't have to dwell and understand all the code here, but because the structure feels the same because it mirrors the fundamental logic of React. React not as this neat JavaScript library, React not as like a nifty tool for prototyping your application, but React as an architecture, as a logical approach to how it is that we organize a user interface. So all of this really just begs the question, why? Right? Why is React eating everything? Why is it that we're finding it in all of these places? Why is it that every week it seems there's some new domain upon which React is being applied? And I think there's really three big reasons why React is eating the world. The first and most important is that React is a flexible architecture based on components. Components that you compose together to get the, kind of, to get the UI that you want. Right, React's architecture is extremely modular, which makes React applications easier to think about, easier to build, easier to maintain, and, of course, easier to understand across platforms. Right? We saw in other talks that you can have direct code reuse, even in, in the case of, uh, of libraries like React Native, for, for example. Right? So there's something really fundamental going on here. And in the second case, reactive rendering which is just to say that your view is a function of your state, is an extremely powerful and potent way to understand and think about your app. As your data changes, your view reflects it. Right? This, isn't, this isn't hard to imagine. And so React's idea of a virtual DOM, which re-renders based on the changes in your state, has spread far beyond the browser's DOM. And, of course, it's brought with it, oftentimes, huge performance increases, like we saw in the case of uh, the, the TV of Netflix's TV app. And the last, of course, is uh, React's unidirectional data flow, which is just fancy talk, really, for saying props, right? We pass props down to our components from our application's central state, right? OK, time for some key takeaways. First is that the great decoupling is your friend. Right? This means that as React has been broken away from React DOM and has spread to all these domains, the skills that you have with React and the understanding of React's architecture that you have makes you able to venture into places that you may not have thought that you could build in. Right? Like you, can, you can go and do stuff that you didn't believe that there would be a library for using similar concepts right? and even maybe some of the same code. Um, next is that the the expansion of React suggests that the original promise of the architecture, which is learn once, write anywhere, isn't total nonsense, right? There, there is a sense, not necessarily where you're writing once and running everywhere, but where you're learning these fundamental concepts and they are applicable across many domains. Uh, and the last is really just that React is awesome. How wild is it? that we can talk about the same architecture across so many different things. I mean, this is such a powerful tool that we've been given here uh, to, to make you know, digital, digital products. 
Um, but there really is one more thing. And that's that we're actually in a React app right now. Because this entire presentation was made in React. I'm in the browser on a, uh, on a local server right now. And we are right here on this line. Uh, because yes, there is a React library for making composable presentations too. All right? Um, so all of this is to say that uh, I think this quote says it best really is React is such a good idea that we're going to be spending the rest of the decade as we continue to explore its implications and its applications. That's why React is eating the world. Thanks. Thank you.